Um, we are the hosts of Bombay Radio. We're a uh, Star Wars and basically whatever else you want to talk about podcast, but we focus on Star Wars for the most part. Yeah, a lot of Star right. Wars, a little bit of video games, a little bit of movies, you know, like comic books, cartoons, that kind of stuff. You're a bunch of dirty fair. Excellent. So your work fits in very well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You guys are you're my kind of people, man. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. For some of our listeners, you know, the non-fanboys that are more casual fans, uh, oh, yeah. what, are some of the, what are some of the book series that you're most known for? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I started my career writing in the Forgotten Realms for Wizards of the Coast, which is kind of a, for lack of a better term, heroic fantasy kind of setting. Um, um, although I, I, I sort of characterize my work in, in, in the, as more sword and sorcery than heroic fantasy. And I'm, and I'm known in the realms for... Uh, my books featuring Erebus Kale, who's a kind of uh, assassin priest. Oh. I've done eight, eight, I've done eight books with him, and and they've been quite popular. And then obviously the Star Wars books have been uh, have been widely read. And I am um, about to release here at the end of June my uh, first original world novel, The Hammer and the Blade, which is very much sword and sorcery fiction from my uh, Angry Robot books. Ah, Angry Robot Books, and uh, so I'm assuming that, you know, people can purchase this when it does come out, you know, through the usual channels, Amazon.com, that sort of thing? Oh, yeah, it should be everywhere. It's it's, uh, it's available, obviously, for pre-order now, but it should be in all bookstores and in all ebook formats and what have you, and all the various online retailers. Ah, yes, for those Kindle users out there. <laughs> yeah, are you, you guys ebook users, readers? Uh, I, I like my ebook. Yes, but, uh, Jeremiah does the ebook. I, I don't have one, but my fiance, she's got a Kindle. She loves it. Yeah, I haven't done it yet either. I, at some point, I suppose I ought to join the, the modern era and at least give it a whirl. But uh, at the moment, yeah, I just read in bed, so I like having the book. But, you know, as I'm going to sleep and so on, and I don't know if it'll feel the same if I get an e-reader. Oh yeah, absolutely, well, I, absolutely. Plus, the best part about the e-readers, everywhere, so. well, the e-readers are cool, though, Jeremiah, for one reason. You don't actually need the lights on to be able to use them. Uh, you, you, you do. No, you do. some of them you don't. Most don't have lighted screens. It's, it's, I like it because I don't have to carry tons of books with me to read, yeah. and I can just yeah. carry it in light. Well, anyway, enough about the <laughs> e-books. <laughs> <laughs> Damn technology. Okay, so probably the biggest, um, as far as our fans know, the biggest... Uh, Star Wars book you've written, uh, I believe, would be The Old Republic Deceived, right? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Okay, so um, well, that wasn't the first Star Wars book you wrote. Didn't you write Cross Current before that, or am I confusing my timeline? Yeah, no, I did. I wrote Cro Cross Current was the first Star Wars novel I wrote, then Deceived, and then uh, Riptide, which is the sequel to uh, Cross Current. Okay, so how were you um, approached to... Uh, you know, right in the Star Wars universe, and what were your initial reactions when they invited you to join in George Lucas' sandbox? Yes, the sandbox. Uh, well, the, uh, I actually approached them. I, 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 um, I'm friends with uh, Bob Salvatore, who wrote, as you know, Vector Prime way back in the day, and, and he is famous primarily for his uh, Dark Elf character set in the Forgotten Realm. So he and I kind of came to know each other from both writing in the realms. And after he wrote Vector Prime, I asked him about because I love Star Wars. I said, Bob, you know, can you uh, give me an introduction? I'd love to write a Star Wars book at some point in the future. So he did. Uh, he gave me an introduction, and I began to sort of uh, routinely pester that editor once a quarter for years and just say, listen, if there's an opening in the line, I'd love to do something for you, and so on and so forth. And eventually she said, well, send me something. Let me see what you can do. So I sent her uh, a book called Shadow Bread, which is the first book of the Twilight War. Uh, which is one of my Irvis Kale books set in the realm. She read that, liked it a lot, and said, okay, we want you to do a Star Wars novel. What do you want to write about? Do you want to write about um, an established character, or do you want to kind of do your own thing? And I immediately said I really would prefer to do my own thing. Um, with the character, I mean, I wanted to have a character, and we ultimately settled on Jaden Core. I wanted to have a character who had some toehold in the setting, but who hadn't really been featured in a novel or otherwise been fleshed out very much up to that point. So uh, I did a bunch of research. They sent me a whole bunch of material to look over, and I finally said, I, I want to do a story with Jaden Core, and here's, here's what I'm thinking. 
and uh, I sent my outline off, and they said, we like this. Oh, and by the way, th there's this one connection that might fit for tying cross-current in a kind of tangential way to the Fate of the Jedi series, if you're willing to add another starship to that opening scene. And I said, done, and we were off and running. Rock on. See, I mean, it's, yeah, as far as how I felt about it, I mean, obviously, you know, as you can imagine, since I've been pestering it for so long, it was, uh, you know, it was awesome. I mean, Star Wars is just so, it's just so huge. It's such a phenomenon that to be able to sort of participate in it and contribute to it and, and so on is really an honor and a privilege. So it's, it's been a blast. It seems like uh, a lot of the, the current writers in the Star Wars universe uh, were ones that had to pester for a while. Because you were talking to um, Sean Williams, who wrote, another one of the Old Republic novels, and then uh, the Force Unleashed books, and he said he had to pester for a while as well until they finally said, fine, write something. And well, so there you go. I, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's, as I say, it's, it's so big, and it's such a part of the culture that it, if you can contribute in even any small way, it, it's kind of a thrill. So, you know, being able to do it has just been, been awesome. So I'm not surprised Sean did the same thing. Now, as for Deceive, so, uh, because you were saying, well, well, maybe, here, here's, Follow-up question, Paul. How did you come to write the scene? Was that basically the same thing? Well, funny you say it. This <laughs> actually went a little bit. It, it was somewhat different. I was in the process of outlining Riptide, and um, and I guess you know they decided at that point that they wanted to do a book that that kind of tied into what would become obviously the Old Republic uh, online role-playing game. Ah, the MMORPG. So the, yeah, I was going to say that, but I was like, man, there's just too many consonants and vowels right there all right in a row. I'm sure I'll mess that up. So, <laughs> you know, she, she said, uh, Shelly said, look, if you want, if this is something you're interested in, then, um, then let me know and we'll we'll put off her title a little bit in terms of the deadline and so on and we'll, we'll go at this. So I said, send me everything you've got in terms of information. Let me evaluate it. And they did, and I did. And I said, yeah, you know, uh, I'd love to do something. They wanted it to feature Malgus, obviously. And um, but really, that was that was about it. I mean, they sent me some background information about Malgus, and um, and said here are things that we you can't contradict, or at least these are things that are foundational to the character. That you know, so if you, when you develop the backstory or otherwise tell the story, you can't run afoul of these things. But there were very few. Otherwise, they just said tell a story. And then what I tried to do was write something. <laughs> Deceive was really a book that had sort of the most constraints on me, and they weren't they weren't bad, but, but they certainly weren't good. I don't want to give that impression at all. It's just that with with kind of cross current riptide, I felt like I had really a lot a lot of elbow room because it's all new characters. It's just me and the editor and so on. With Deceive, you know, it's working with both Del Rey and Lucasfilm, and on top of that, Bioware. And Bioware had some story developed for him that, as I mentioned, I couldn't kind of uh, run afoul of that. So. Uh, was the way that I tried to navigate those constraints was to craft a story that took place in a really narrow kind of time frame and that focused very sort of keenly on the characters rather than kind of galactic stakes or that kind of thing. And so it, it ended up, I, I was very happy with it. It ended up working out really well. And all those people were awesome to work with, by the way. It's just, you know, that's the nature of the business when you're writing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You always you got this guy, that guy, this guy over here. You got to kind of. Exactly. You got to kind of navigate that narrow tunnel. You got it. So, how influenced were you by the, the Deceived trailer that came out? I think it was. Was it 2009, James? Uh, or was it 2010? I think it was 09, but don't quote me. I know your book, it focuses a lot on, um, I believe it's the. Uh, like the apprentice of the Jedi Master that was killed in that trailer. Yes. And yeah, no, I, I, I was strongly influenced by the trailer. You know, when they, I think, I shouldn't, I don't know that this is true. I don't know if a book was planned before the trailer came out and it just was so well received by the fan base that that um, they then said, well, we need to do a book about this character. Or if all along they had planned on doing something that featured Malgus. My suspicion is the latter. But, I mean, I love the trailer just like, probably you guys did and just about everybody else on planet earth did it was just awesome oh yeah so i saw that i thought i i want to write a story that features you know that guy and and um you know i i actually portray that scene in the book so so yeah i mean it was a heavy influence it, it was that thing i it basically was a springboard from which i took off because you know when we were contemplating the the the, the book we talked uh, i could tell a much earlier story in Malgus's life, something that happened later and so on. So there was no need necessarily to tie it 
directly to that first trailer, but having seen it, I, I was just so taken with it that I said, I want to, I want that, all of that stuff to happen in the book and then to build off of that. Oh, so it definitely had to almost be kind of a fanboy moment, like, I'm going to do that. That's oh, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much. And it's been super cool since, you know, the, the, the other trailers have come out, and they don't feature anything from my book necessarily, but, you know, they feature Malgus, and I, I feel like I got a little, just a little bit of an ownership interest in Malgus, so every time I see a trailer that comes out with him or something, I'm just like, damn, that's awesome. <laughs> so have you been able to play the older public at all, or are you just don't want to, to touch it? No, I haven't, and, and I haven't wanted to touch it because it'll be a time sink for me, and I'm so busy between the day job and family and writing and so on that... I just I can't afford to get caught up in something that's going to suck up all my time. I'd love to be able to, and maybe at some point I'll just give it a go. But but I have I've resisted so far. Well, they've had lots of like free weekend trials where you can just play for the weekend for free. Maybe Don't help me, to... man. <laughs> and there you Stop go, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the it, brother. Kind of game I can't do it, man. <laughs> Okay, so you mentioned you, you've done a lot of work with um, R.A. Salvatore, you know, I, I believe you did War of the Spider Queen with him. Oh, yeah. And you said how he influenced you to get into Star Wars and so on. When you were writing for Star Wars, did his experience writing in the Star Wars universe influence yours at all? Um, you know, not in a direct way. I, I can't remember if I talked with him directly. But I, I think I sent him a thank you email or something, you know, or I gave him a call when... Um, when I got the first gig with with Cross Current, but um, I mean, I knew that <laughs> I knew that that he had taken an enormous amount of flack over Vector Prime and Chewbacca's fate, but but no, I mean, I don't think it really affected me in any way. I mean, I, you know, I I just always try to tell a good story, and if that means the character dies or doesn't die, then that's just the way it goes, and I'm prepared to endure whatever fallout may come. Of course, I'm not uh, writing with any of the the movie characters at this point. So, I, I, you know, none of them are as beloved as Chewie was. So I, maybe I'd be singing a different tune if I was writing something yeah, about man. Luke or Han or something. I don't know, though, man. That way that Chewie went out, that was that was pretty boss. Yeah, well, right. and that's the but, thing. I mean, it seemed like he did, he, you know, Bob did justice to the character. Yeah, because Chewie's epic, and that was, that was an epic death. But yeah. the problem was, James, was what happened is they gave a list to Lucasfilm saying, can we kill any of these characters? And, and Lucasfilm saying, gave a list back and said, you can't touch any of these. And they're like, Chewie's not on the list. Let's kill him. And <laughs> we dying. They just forgot to put him on the list. And so when they killed him, it was like, oh, Shit. we killed him. <laughs> but, you know, be, well, I guess I shouldn't say, but I'd be surprised if it went down that way, only because unless the process has changed materially, uh, since that time, you know, a, a, a drafts of the book go through editing at Lucasfilm. It's not as if they get the first time they see your book is when it's on shelves. You know, they get they get a copy of the manuscript and get the pushback on it and so on. And usually there's even an outline that circulates beforehand and so on. So yeah. I'd, be, I'd be shocked if the death of Chewie came as a shock to anybody. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, mean, I don't know. It could be, but that's see. I was saying the same thing. You know, like, I highly doubt anybody was really, oh, they killed Chewbacca, we didn't want that to happen, because it's Lucasfilm. They're, they're like they're like big brother with this stuff. I mean, I don't blame them. But if Chewie died, I'm pretty sure they went, okay, you can do it. Well, because originally they wanted to kill Luke Skywalker. No, you can't do that. <laughs> that would have been a little more um, iffy. <laughs> okay, so you've written lots in uh, Forgotten Realms. You've written... You know, quite a few in, in Star Wars. So why don't you tell us about some of the other um, book series you've written in? Or uh, tell us okay, well, I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm uh, still writing the Air of Kale stories in the Forgotten Realms, and those are a blast. And, and you know, the fan base there is 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 smaller, but just as lively as the Star Wars fan base. So that's kind of a kick. I kind of prepared me a bit for the Star Wars work. So my next book out in the realms is something called Godborn, which continues the story of Erebus Kale and his son and so on. And uh, I can't talk about the release date yet because there are things that are sort of in motion with respect to that. Uh, and as I also, as I mentioned, I've got the Hammer and the Blade coming out at the end of June. Uh, that's that'll be I'm cool. very excited about that. I think that's uh, that, that book is the most, and I've had a lot of fun writing books, but that is the most fun I've ever had writing a book. I, it just suits my sensibilities absolutely perfectly. And then uh, I am um, 
I've got a Star Wars hardcover duology that will be coming out. I can't really talk about release dates or content or anything there either. We just, and I can say this only because Star Wars books on their Facebook page put up a picture and all that. But we just had, uh, we've been sort of working on this for a long time. We just had a big kind of brainstorming session the other day with uh, myself and the folks at Del Rey. And I think, I think we've got everything now squared away. So I'm, I'm hopeful that an announcement on that will be forthcoming in, 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 in I hope. Well, so I get a lot of questions about what the heck is going on with that with that thing because they announced the duology just about a year and a half ago, I think, or at least a year ago, and I haven't been able to say anything about it. Again. What's going on? When are we coming out? Like, Tell us. I think I gave well, you that. get information. I'm assuming. Well, whenever you get it, I'm assuming we'll probably get it, and then we can pass it on. Oh yeah, no, that's that's what I was thinking. Like, I'd be if I were in his position, yeah, I'd be like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> After a year and a half, I'd be a little freaked out, too. Yeah, uh, everything is good. That is always good. We look forward to reading it. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, think, I, 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 stuff. I think it, it will um, generate lots of discussion once the announcement is made. So Discussion That's is a good thing. Because I, I know, honestly, the way Star Wars books are right this second, there's lots of uh, groaning after some of the long mega series which have just come out. Yeah, I think Del Rey has, has said they want to move away from some of that. They want to move more towards kind of duologies and trilogies and so on, and some of the more self-contained standalone stories. I think they said that, and that'll be yeah, true. That'll did. be true of mine, anyway. After Legacy of the Force, after what New Jedi Order, Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi, we're a little tired of long series that yeah, just, don't need just to be that long. Me, just give me something little. You know, you know what? I'll take a Tales of the Empire. Can, can I get more of that? <laughs> <laughs> that would yeah. be actually really cool. Yeah, well, you know what's funny though. I mean, well, it's not funny. It's understandable. I mean, there there, there is a. Um, it seems to me anyway. I'm looking at this from the outside, frankly. But but the the big meta plot series sell better. You know, I mean, if you look at where they place, and there's a whole bunch of factors that go into this. But if you look at where the various Fate of the Jedi novels place on the New York Times bestseller list, it's usually higher than where the standalones place. And so now some of that is. Um, probably due to marketing, and some of that is due to the fact that always the meta plot stories feature the solos of Skywalkers, and that's where, you know, when you have stories that feature the solos of Skywalkers, you, you, you've kind of roped in all Star Wars fans, and if you start to splinter off into other side characters, some, frankly, some people just aren't interested in other side characters very much. So, you, you know, so there is this kind of business kind of imperative to to the extent you can, you want to sell as many books as you can. That's good for the it's good for Star Wars, it's good for fans and so on. So but but I'm pleased that they're doing what they're doing. You can kinda of have your cake and eat it here too. I mean you can certainly have trilogies and duologies that feature the big characters but that don't stretch across nine books and three years. True. 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 <laughs> okay, so we have one more question for you before we, we let you go and okay. let you drive home safely. Um do you think we'll be seeing you at any of the upcoming conventions, like say Celebration Six or anything like that, coming up? Um, no. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to be at this year is uh, Gen Con, which isn't a Star Wars convention. It's more of a Wizards of the Coast kind of D and D gaming yes, convention. Yes, Gen Con. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but and I, frankly, it's just again, it's one of these things with me where I've got the day job and I've got uh, young children, and it's just hard for me to. To travel, so to, and I don't like to fly. So to the extent I travel, it's always the stuff that's close, kind of driving distance from Michigan. So a couple of years ago, I went to C2E2 and, and did some Star Wars sightings there, and that was a lot of fun. I was in Chicago, and um, you know I'll do Gen Con now and again, but but at least for the time being, some of these other con, it's just it's just not in the cards, man. So until we have celebration up in Detroit, yes, yeah, that would be great. That'd be that all over there. Cool, that would be cool. <laughs> I, I can see that. That would rock, but you know who knows. I think you know when, when isn't it usually during a winter month though, or is it? Summer? Um, it depends. It's usually it's in summer. The past right, well, of summers, but it just depends on where it is. Where well, the location. You know, they could they could do yeah, something usually, in the Midwest they, one of these times. They should Chicago. Okay, well we'd like to thank you for your time. Um, we know you're busy, and we well we sort of caught you off guard today. Um, oh, we'd like to thank you for everything you've done. And uh, remember, listeners, his book will be coming out next month. Buy it on Amazon, buy it on probably Barnes & Noble, buy it at your local bookstore, and uh, support them. Do it. I appreciate that, guys.
Buy all the copies. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself, just one person, buy all the copies. Just do it. <laughs> and uh, we hope you have a good day, okay? Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll talk again soon, okay? Oh, anytime, man. Yeah, anytime okay. you want to come back on, you are more than welcome. All right, well, maybe once we get the, some information out there on the duology, we'll have something, some more Star Wars to talk about. That'll be, uh, yes. that'll oh. be cool. I'll right. you on Twitter and hunt you down for that one. Sounds good. All right, talk with you then. Have a good Peace. one, man. All right, you too. Bye. <laughs>